A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. You should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain so that you will find you at peace. Think of our Lord's patience as your opportunity to be saved. You have been warned about this, my friends. Be careful not to get carried away by the errors of unprincipled people from the firm ground that you are standing on. Instead, go on growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be glory in time and in eternity. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Before the mountains were born, or the earth or the world brought forth, you are God without beginning or end. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You turn men back into dust and say, go back, sons of men. To your eyes, a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Our span is 70 years or 80 for those who are strong, and most of these are emptiness and pain. They pass swiftly and we are gone. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The chief priests and the scribes and the elders sent to Jesus some Pharisees and some Herodians to catch him out in what he said. These came and said to him, Master, we know you are an honest man, that you are not afraid of anyone, because a man's rank means nothing to you, and that you teach the way of God in all honesty. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay? Yes or no? Seeing through their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why do you set this trap for me? Hand me a denarius and let me see it. They handed him one and he said, Whose head is this? Whose name? Caesar's, they told him. Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. This reply took them completely by surprise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's an apocalyptic feeling to that first reading we heard from the second letter of St. Peter. St. Peter has two letters in the New Testament, um, and the dating suggests there's a bit of a gap between them. So in this letter, this is now the final part of it, and he's saying, Beware, beware, because um, the day of the Lord is coming. And when it comes, everything's going to be flipped on its head. And I just read it thinking, we are in a moment of human existence, um, certainly in modern memory, of things being flipped on their head. Totally, totally changed life as we know it. In every walk of life. 
And um, it struck me that this is the Christian way of life. The Christian way of life is constantly to be dying and rising. So we see it in seeds. Jesus loves talking about seeds and growth and plants. Why? Because the seed is an image of, of everything. In the seed is an image of the, of the world, of the universe, of man himself, man and woman himself, themselves. When the seed falls into the ground, it dies before it can bear fruit. And so we live in this constant um, Paschal mystery, this constant dying and rising again, dying, rising again. A priest once said to me, it's, uh, he said it's, it's a matrix. I didn't really understand what he used by the, meant by the word, but it was a cool word. It's a matrix that we have to live in. He said, you constantly have to be asking yourself, where am I on that dying and rising? Am I dying with the Lord right now? Or am I rising? And it's the same in the universe. That all those things we take for granted have to die because we cling to them too much. So the Christian way of life is not, you know, if people would say, so you, so you think people should lose their jobs, lose their lives, lose their health, lose their um, everything they, they rested on? No, we don't say that. But what the Lord does say to us is, anything that's become an idol needs to be, needs to be stripped away. Anything we place our trust in that is not the Lord himself needs to die. That is the pain of the Christian life. It's the pain the Lord said when he said, pick up your cross and follow me. And so we get an image of that because St. Peter says, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat, like everything we take around, the sky itself, the elements, even they won't survive. Actually, the word for sky in the Greek letter is uranos. Uranos, we, we have, use that word um, in the Greek, our father. Pater hemon, hot entois oranois, our father who art in heaven. So it's not sky, it's heaven itself. The dwelling place of God, he says, will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat when the day of God comes, when the coming of Jesus Christ comes. So as Christians, we, we are passing through this world always. Everything, everything we know has to be remade. And that's what we're waiting for. So we, we live this strange tension of being in union with the Lord already in the sacraments, in our prayer life, in each other, in trying to bring the kingdom to life here on earth. And we wait for its fulfillment because we can't be there yet because the Lord hasn't come. Because as Peter says, the new heavens and the new earth haven't come. We're, we're still experiencing dying and rising. It's at the end of time. That's what we're promised, what Jesus promises us, is that there's a day coming when time will end. The judgment will come for all humanity, you and me as well. We have to give an account for ourselves. And everything we assumed will flip on its head. And so how do we stay safe in this? You know, um, Jesus speaks about a final trial that will come to, to the faithful, to humanity before that day comes, that will, and how does he say it? You know, to um, take away even the elect, he says, to draw them away from the faith. How do we stay safe in that moment, knowing that we're going to be attacked, knowing that that trial is coming? It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one we welcomed on Sunday, but the one we thank today. We thank not just for his, his gifts and his encouragement and his consolation, but his protection. The Holy Spirit's protection, that's how we're gonna stay faithful. Holy Spirit, guide me, keep me docile, keep me faithful, so that when I see my different paths opening up ahead of me and I think, gosh, maybe this is the answer, Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe I was wrong all along. Maybe Jesus isn't the Messiah. Maybe it's this earthly creation instead. Some, some person rises up. The scriptures call the Antichrist, offering a different type of salvation. How do I stay focused? The Holy Spirit keeps me focused. Keeps me focused on Jesus Christ. So we go to him today as protector, as well as encourager, as well as advocate, as well as gift giver, the protector of our faith the one who's 
blowing us, the breath that's blowing us home to Jesus, to the Father. That's why we pray one day we'll meet again.